Hi all, in this video we are going to see about nerve degeneration and regeneration. So this question especially the part of nerve degeneration has been asked multiple times in many university questions. So we will see and try to understand the basic concept here. So what do you mean by nerve degeneration? See once there is a nerve injury, a series of structural and functional changes occur and that changes are called nerve degeneration. And after some time, the nerve might recover. So this, whether it will recover completely or not, depends on the grade of nerve injury. So we've got a classification of this grading. So we'll quickly see that. So suppose this is the structure of the nerve. We know that here we've got the axon, uh, which is surrounded by the endoneurium, which are arranged in fascicles, which are in turn surrounded by the perineurium. And a bundle of fascicles are arranged together and covered by the epineurium. So this is the basic structure of the nerve. So if there is a slight pressure or traction over the nerve, you have a condition called neuropraxia. So in this case, there, is, there are no structural problems, but there can be functional problems. But regeneration would be easier as there are no structural problems. The second grade is axonotemesis. In this only the axon is affected. The endoneurium, the perineurium or the epineurium is not affected. The third grade which is a more severe grade is neurotemesis. So from this stage onwards the different coverings will get, uh, will start being affected. So in this case the axon as well as the endoneurium is cut. So that is meant by grade 3 neurotemesis. In the grade 4, the perineurium is affected. So naturally, there is going to be fascicular disorganization because the perineurium is affected. And in grade 5, we have complete transection and in this case, the epineurium is affected. So, grade 1 injury or neuropraxia, it's just transient decrease in function due to mild pressure ischemia. Recovery is complete within hours to weeks. Grade 2 axonotemesis in this is usually caused by severe pressure or severe pressure but in this case endoneurium is intact the recovery is delayed but there can be complete regeneration in grade 3 neurotemesis here both axon and endoneurium is disrupted in grade 4 we have physical disorganization because perineurium is affected and in grade 5 we have complete transection so this is the grading of nerve injury and it is based on the grade of nerve injury that the regeneration of the nerve is decided so, so we know that the normal structure of a neuron consists neuron. of a cell body and, and axon which is in turn surrounded by myelin sheath and the schwann cells thereby conducting the, the impulse and the through the target cells. muscle. So, so, so what happens if there is an injury in between? Okay, so this the conduction will be injury. hampered, right? So what are the so changes that occur that when there is an injury? Area, that is so in the cell from body, as you the can see, there will be swelling of the soma as well as swelling of the nucleus. The proximal part. There will be so much swelling so the that the nucleus will be pushed to a site and the nissen substance will disintegrate. The phenomenon known injury, as chromatolysis. There will be changes, there'll be changes in the, the proximal stem which is called so degenerative now changes. Now we will discuss this And in, in the anterograde direction so we have what we have is meant by valerian degeneration. The changes that occur so the first thing that you will notice is that the axon is swelling and the myelin sheath will also swell up and later on can be converted to fat droplets. They are known as myelin bleeds and later on all the extra myelin the fat droplets will be so, by so we know that the normal structure of a neuron consists occur, of a cell body and axon which is in turn surrounded by myelin so sheath and schwann cells thereby conducting the impulse so within to the target uh, muscle. Hours, what so what happens, happens if there is an injury in between, in the, proximal the part, conduction will be hampered. Swelling right? of so the what are the changes that occur when there is an injury? Up. So the in the cell body, as you can see, there will be swelling of the soma as well as swelling uh, of the to nucleus, end, which is called eccentrically There will be so much swelling that the nucleus will be pushed and to a side and then the substance will disintegrate. The granules will also disintegrate, which is called chromatolysis. There will be changes in the proximal stem, which is called degenerative so these are the changes. changes that occur and in the, the anterograde direction, we will have what, what is meant by valerian degeneration. As I said, the changes of the stem is called valerian degeneration. So the first thing that you will notice is there will be axon swelling and the myelin sheath will also swell up and later on to be converted to fat drop. Leads. They are known as the myelin, myelin beads. Sheath, and later on, there. all the extra they myelin, the fat droplets, will be droplets. engulfed by the macrophages called myelin schwann cells. To the schwann cells will be there. So these but are the myelin different changes will be converted to fat droplets, and thus Thank they are you. called myelin beads. And after some time, we can see that the terminals, see here the terminals are more into the target structure, but here the, the terminals are retracted. So that is another change. And you can see that after some time, 
the whole thing disintegrates it's phagocytosed by the different cells and it is just the strand cells that remain so these are the changes in a in a very concise manner what happens to the proximal part and the distal part so we'll see more points regarding them so what are the changes that occur proximal to the injury so as i said it begins within 24 to 48 hours continues to up to 15 to 20 days in the cell body it swells up it becomes more spherical the nucleus also swells up it is displaced and the nucleolus is also extruded out the nissel substance undergoes disintegration which is called chromatolysis and all other organs also eventually disappear now what are the changes occurring distal to the injury as I said, it is called Valerian degeneration. First of all, the synaptic transmission decreases within the R. Within us, the synaptic transmission decreases. Then what happens to the axon? As I said, it becomes swollen. It will become irregular in shape. And after a few days, that too will disintegrate to form irregular fragments. And the nerve fibrils within will break down to granular debris. That is why in the final image, we saw that it is just the Schwann cells that are remaining. Everything else disintegrates. The terminals retract and full degeneration takes weeks to be completed. Now what happens to the myelin sheath? For the myelin sheath, it shows slow disintegration when compared to the axon. It starts on the fourth day and continues to up to a month. Here it is converted to fat droplets containing cholesterol ester and that is why it is called myelin beads. And this whole thing, this whole swelling of axon and myelin sheath, they usually occur due to calcium dependent proteases there will be a rapid influx of calcium so many calcium dependent proteases will be activated and it is that that causes the disintegration of the whole neuron now what happens to the swan cells as i said the swan cells are not that affected in fact they start multiplying rapidly and it is these swan cells that recruit the phagocytic cells uh, by uh, producing chemoattractants so see the swan cells will produce chemoattractants so that the phagocytic cells can come and clear up the debris so that regeneration can occur quickly so the debris is cleared by basically the cells that are phagocytes that are recruited by the schwann cells now this is true in case of peripheral nervous system but what about central nervous system in central nervous system this function is done by the microglia okay so if a short note is asked on valerian degeneration you have to start off with the definition that is it is these are the changes that occur distal to the site of injury and also you have to mention the changes that occur to the axon cylinder myelin sheath and schwann cells as well as draw the diagram so next we'll quickly see the concept of regeneration also so during regeneration what happens so this is the situation now here you can see that there are sprouts that are formed at the end of that stump in the proximal part you have multiple sprouts that are formed here everything is clean it is just the schwann cells that are present then in the next stage you can see that the nucleus size is decreasing right the swelling is decreasing and not only that the schwann cells have started producing myelin sheath and now the multiple stars have formed a growth cone and it is the schwann cells which will guide the growth of this sprout so see it, it the schwann cells will help it to reconnect with the rest of the neuron okay the uh, schwann cells will guide form guide co guiding columns so that this growth cone this this part is now called the growth cone this growth cone can go through these myelin sheath and reach the target organ and the nissel's granules will reappear the nucleus is back to normal shape and now it has grown through and it will establish its connection with the target organ so these are the changes that occur during regeneration so what are the changes that occur regeneration changes that occur in the proximal stump the soma is back to action that means it is start it will start synthesizing the proteins fills the ret uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum and this is called axonal reaction the chromatolysis will be reversible and uh, there will there will be multiple sprouts which form growth cones after some time the soma will uh, regain normal size the nissel granules and organelles will reappear nucleus returns to the center and thus we have a normal um, architecture of the neuron back in the proximal stump what about the distal stump the schwann cells multiply they form guiding columns one sprout will succeed and it re the target the regrowth rate is around one to four millimeters per day and the schwann cells will produce 
new myelin sheath so that is how the neuro the nerve regeneration occurs now there is a phenomenon called de denervation hypersensitivity what do you mean by denervation hypersensitivity see after nerve injury we know that there will be decreased neurotransmitter release right now the body has got a reflex mechanism in which whenever the neurotransmitter is released it will increase the receptor expression on the target or in other words there will be up regulation of receptors so now after suppose there was a nerve injury the neurotransmitter release was decreased so naturally there was up regulation of receptors but now the nerve has healed so on reinnervation now what happens there is increased sensitivity so that is called denervation hypersensitivity and the main cause is up regulation of receptors okay so we'll finish up this concept by quickly lo looking at the factors that affect regeneration so um, it first of all it's based as i said it's based on the severity of injury so if there's a gap of more than 3 mm then usually the regeneration fails because there is possible formation of neuroma that means the the multiple sprouts form will just bundle together it will not be it will, it cannot join to the axon to form a to establish a connection second one is condition of the soma so suppose uh, the damage is near the soma then the survival chance is less then the location like for example in the cns there is poor regeneration because there the the instead of schwann cells that role is played by the oligodendrocytes so naturally there is more a uh, chance for formation of glial scar whereas in peripheral nervous system there is a better regeneration because we have the guidance from the schwann cells and finally neurotrophins which are substances that promote growth so neurotrophins actually helps in regeneration and they help to prevent sprout entanglement see just having multiple sprouts is not enough we want the sprouts to be guided so that it can it can be established a relationship with the target organ so neurotrophins helps to prevent sprout entanglement so thus in this video we have seen about grading of nerve injury the nerve degeneration especially what happens in the proximal segment and the distal segment which is also called valerian degeneration nerve regeneration the factors affecting as well as the physiological basis for denervation hypersensitivity so i hope this was useful for you thank you